What's the worst housekist experience you've had? One of my best buddies from high school called me up and begged for me to come get him from a town about three hours away. The idea was he would stay with us for a couple weeks while he looked for work and then get his own place. Six months later I ended up renting him a room for one month and dropping him off with his junk and wishing him well. His father had warned me he would drain me dry and he wasn't kidding. All those months he was supposedly using my vehicle to look for work he was instead going out to a local bar. Every bottle in our liquor cabinet was drained down to the last finger. She stole all of my booze, pissed on my couch, tore up the flower bed to the side of my driveway and destroyed my guest bathroom. This all happened after I'd fallen asleep. She was a guest of a tenant, roommate and that roommate was told either her friend wasn't allowed over ever again or she'd have to find a new place to live. Couple came for a weekend to my small apartment. Surprised that they brought three dogs and an extra friend, the puppy took a dump on my floor in the night, which nobody got up to clean. Another dog had a crate but managed to get a hold of the carpet outside of the crate, drag it in, and shred it. They also chewed up cardboard and wooden furniture. When they left, all the shredded stuff was just where it fell. My aunt came to visit for what was supposed to be a week or two and didn't leave for almost a year when I was a kid. She redecorated my room and even put up pictures of herself. Now the running joke in my family is to randomly leave pictures of yourself around the house when we visit people. Oh my that's so funny. Reminds me of a guy I used to work with who used to take pictures of himself and his family to Ikea. Over a long while he put them in the frames in all the displays. Nearly pissed myself when I went one day and spotted a pic of him on a beach somewhere in a bedroom display. My dad had a cousin who did this exact same thing, supposed to be a couple weeks or so, went on for a year, hung her family pics in the hallway, and not even with a nailed, but huge screws. My dad was too nice to ask her to leave so it was up to my grandfather and I. She passive-aggressively hung them up. I took them down and put them in her bed in the same passive-aggressive fashion. She got so pissed that she finally moved out but wrote my dad hate-filled threatening letters for a couple of years. She thought they were going to get married, literally said so in the letters. They were first cousins. She was so nuts. My mom's cousin and her husband went for a short visit to our house. She was five months pregnant then. She and her husband didn't leave until the baby was two months old. Them when leaving, it's a pity we could only pay you a short visit. We'd have loved to stay a bit more, but Jimmy's starting college tomorrow. And to be honest we're leaving because this house is a shithole. There's dog shit in the fridge. We burned your mattress because it was cold. Oh yeah and we filled your washing machine with bricks to use as a drum machine. My old roommate told me she had a friend who had fallen on rough times and needed a spot to crash for a while. No worries, I told her. Ooh, big worries. He was a professional B8 boxer, but more that that he was a professional smoker. Like, I'm fine with weed generally, but this dude was on 12-15 blunts a day and would roll one as soon as he rolled his tidy whitey clad ass off of our couch. So for like four months, as soon as I woke up, it was nothing but clouds of white owl and brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
and I caught them sneaking out the next morning five minutes before my alarm was to go off. I got upset with him and said it was not okay to lie to me and hide things from me. He freaked out and made up a bunch of stuff that he told my roommate and my friend. His sister said I called him a useless junkie etc. I've had a lot of friends struggle with addiction. I never ever say something like that. After having my roommate scream at me over the lies the guy told I was done. He wasn't allowed back. My uncle and his wife came to stay for a while. They got my room and I slept on the couch for a few months. NBD when you're a kid I guess. What actually ticked me off is that when they finally left we found out that they'd seriously messed up my room. Everything reeked of cigarettes. There were ground up peanut shells in the carpet, cigarette burns on my mattress, etc. And we couldn't figure out why the room smelled like death until my we lifted up the bed and found mummified cat shit stuck up in the shag carpeting. They either had such bad hygiene that they didn't notice the smell or they knew and they just didn't care. Edit to everyone asking how we didn't notice the cigarette smell. My guess is that they only smoked in the room during the day when everyone was out. Probably smoked out the window. My parents weren't smokers. We just figured the smell was coming from their bodies which we couldn't do anything about. <sighs> I had ex-friends crash in my spare room for a bit to get on their feet. Left the room absolutely nasty, but the worst thing was finding a dried cat turd mashed in the carpet under a bookshelf. Thing is, it would have been physically impossible for the cat to get under the shelf to poop there which means they found a mess from their animal and just put my bookshelf on top of it rather than clean it up. That would be the girl visiting my sister-in-law who decided it would be funny to repeatedly prank call 911. I got a very angry call from the local police station saying we either stopped or they'd be sending a squad car over. Apologized profusely to the officer and thanked him for calling us first. She was not invited back to her house. She was 17 and definitely old enough to know better. In Florida, the first false alarm call is not, but usually the second time is an explanation saying that they will get charged if this continues, unless it was explained the first time. Anything after you will probably get charged. I remember my graduation party and a bunch of cops showed up. Fairly weird for a backyard BBQ and were like, who called the cops? Well. We rounded up all the youngins and the cops gave them a nice little spontaneous speech about when to and when not to call the cops. We cut the cake and the officers had a slice. Good times were had by all I suppose. Ed, what if the cops just pretended someone called the cops to get free cake? My dad owned a business his whole life and was in the process of hiring new installers. One applicant came in from out of town and my dad, being the kind man he was, offered for him to stay in our home. When the morning came the man went to take a shower. My parents heard the water turn on and it stayed on for a really long time. After an hour and a half of running water, my mom made my dad go check on him. My dad went upstairs, picked the lock on the bathroom door, and found blood and a limp body on the floor next to the running shower. The man had overdosed, lost consciousness, hit his head on the shower side and died. He was dead, right there on the bathroom floor that I used for 10 years. One thing is for sure, he won't be coming back to our house again. Well, this one happened a few years ago, but the husband of my great aunt came to visit us. Mind you he was like 80 something years old, so he goes to the bathroom to do his bossiness, and he comes down. Now he smells a little bit. But we all brush it aside then when he sits down and after a while gets back up to leave, you can see shit stains on the sofa. Not only that but my mom then goes upstairs and finds the bathroom full of shit. Not full on shit but a bunch of it was sprayed in the walls etc. To this day we haven't spoken about it and that man passed away around a year ago. Ran into a guy I used to call a friend and let him stay with me for a while as he was down on his luck. 
I guess we'd ran out of toilet paper so he used a washcloth and left it at the side of the toilet, kicked him out and found out later he walked away with some of my CDs. Some mutual friends let him stay. Against my advice, they came home one day to find him passed out on the couch with his pants around his ankles. After they kicked him out they found out he dragged up $900 in phone sex charges. Fuck you Noel, you always were and always will be a piece of shit. They came home one day to find him passed out on the couch with his pants around his ankles. After they kicked him out they found out he dragged up $900 in phone sex charges. Damn dot 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 dude was jerking off to a phone sex line. What year was this? Housemate had people come over, order a pizza. Decide they didn't want it and refused to answer the door so they didn't have to pay. At 4 a.m., pizza guy could hear them through the door so kept knocking louder and louder. I eventually went to the door and opened it, then explained to the pizza guy what was going on, so that they didn't blacklist the property, and forced them to pay. As they were packing to leave the next day I noticed them trying to take some of my extra PS4 controllers by sneaking them into their bag. I'm normally an introvert but already being cranky from no sleep I lost my shit at that point. Called them a disgusting thief and told them to pfo. I had a few friends over one night and had admittedly had way too much to drink. Apparently friends had invited their friends over during the craziness. Woke up to find education missing. Brand new DVDs were gone. I wonder what else they took that I just never realized was gone. Not knowing is a really crappy feeling. It was 10 years ago so I don't care anymore but it definitely was a wake up call. It's weird knowing someone had free reign over your house. Could have been rifling through your drawers, putting things in their pockets here and there, and it's your own fault. I had surgery and was on bed rest for a week. I asked my cousin, who was living with me at the time, to keep an eye on me, as I was on heavy painkillers. I stayed on the couch and let her use my bedroom. When I recovered, I found used beef piled up on clean towels in the bathroom cabinet, a douche nozzle behind my nightstand. Trash piled all the way up the wall in the kitchen, dirty dishes everywhere, a plate of rancid food in the microwave, ketchup and mustard smeared on the floors, and she had stolen a bunch of clothing and CDs, along with one of my iPhone chargers. She had a Windows phone, and she poked a hole in my $2,500 sleep number bed. I kicked her ass out immediately. Edit, why I gave her the bed and took the couch. The couch was like two steps from the bathroom, and by giving her the bedroom I thought I was ensuring that she would have no reason not to do this. One simple task because she would have to pass by the couch to go to the kitchen or the bathroom. Edit, explain douche nozzle. A douche is a feminine hygiene product that many women use to control vaginal odor. The bag contains the product and the nozzle is inserted into the vagina. When you squeeze the bag the product is pushed out of the nozzle and it rinses the vagina. Oh this is a pretty good one. So I had a really old, good friend call me and tell me they needed a place to stay for maybe a few days or a week when I lived in the Pacific Northwest. I of course said yes. Then she told me her girlfriend was coming too. Okay, great, they show up. And when they get to my porch she tells me her girlfriend has strep throat. At first I think okay, whatever. But then I stop and think isn't that highly contagious? But they are already here. So I just kind of start thinking to myself that I'll have to somehow keep them to my spare bedroom and sterilize the crap out of everything. But then I'm just wondering why my friend didn't tell me in advance, or if they don't know how contagious it is. Like if my girlfriend had strep. I'd go get a hotel and not subject my friend to that. After about a day, my friend tells me via text she has to leave, which at first I'm relieved. But then she asks if her girlfriend can just stay at my place. I don't know her. I've never met her in my life. I tell her I have another couple that need to come stay with me, which was true and that I'm not comfortable housing someone I don't know who is sick. She says that is fine. But then when she comes to get her stuff she acts all pissed and says well see you sometime, maybe. And I don't hear from her for a long long time after. Kinda fucked up she put me in that situation tbh. 
I was on my honeymoon with my husband and we let his dad stay at our house, but said he had to be out by the time we got back. We let him know when we were on our way home and expected him to be gone. We get back. He was gone but had not gotten his stuff out of the house. On top of that, he trashed the place like a group of teenagers, empty pizza boxes and trash laying around. He came back and stayed around for a bit and asked me if I was mad at him. Like of course I'm mad. What do you expect? A friend I haven't seen in a year or so called me last week and wanting to catch up so he came over. I didn't realize he was blackout drunk until he walked in and I didn't realize how to defuse the situation. It started with him taking a shit in my bathroom and instead of flushing it he just put both seats down, went into my fridge to grab a craft type that I have been saving for a rainy day and drank it, went outside and out of nowhere he starting saying the N word, he's never been racist as far as I know. At this point I told him to get the fuck out nicely or calm down but I also didn't want him to crash his car home as he lives an hour away. He then said he's going to go get cigarettes so I offered to drive him. As soon as we're down the road he yells at me to pull over because he has to pee, again calling me the n-word for no apparent reason. I told him to just wait, 3 minutes and he takes out his dick and puts it into his beer can and just pees everywhere and then throws it outside. By this time I'm livid and he grabs my arm to apologize but his hand was soaked in piss so he basically just wiped it all over me. I knew I was going to punch him in the face if I didn't get to the gas station so once I got there I told him to go inside. When he went in I peeled out of there and called his GF saying she needed to pick him up from that gas station. I took a shower and an hour later his GF calls me and says he's in the backseat of a cop car because he called 911 asking for co- Cocaine. Needless to say that's the last time I'll be seeing him. My brother Todd is a drug addict and an alcoholic. Before mom and dad finally had enough and got a restraining order, they kept thinking that if they kept him at home he'd get sober. He would wander the streets and bring home homeless people who were also strung out in the middle of the night. One time it was this woman who used our bathroom, taking a shower and leaving an absolute mess including her soiled thong on the bathroom floor. She also stole some stuff. We didn't know about her until the morning when she left my brother's room because despite being high as a kite she was quiet. And for once my brother, despite being high himself, remembered the alarm code, which was unusual because he normally forgets it when he's high drunk. Most of the time we'd catch him bringing home strange women and men to sleep in his room because the alarm would go off and wake us all up. Every time dad would throw them both out and change the garage door code for the night so he couldn't get back in. Another time one of my mom's now former friends came over in a rage, forcing her way in. She had been at urgent care and got tired of waiting. She had a bladder infection that was so bad she was bleeding. She left the bathroom a bloody mess and screamed at mom the entire time before finally leaving. Mom cut her out of her life after that. I was 23, just signed a lease for a duplex with my girlfriend, got new furniture and a new computer then my brother shows up one with a broken foot and says he can't work so he stays with me while he acts grateful and I had a spare bedroom that was using as an office. My new computer was in the room. He downloaded so much porn it crashed the hard drive. Had to wipe the hard drive and reinstall Windows. I put a parental block on the computer after that. He finally got a job and pretty much spent all his money on drugs. I would ask him to pitch in money for food, bills and would be totally delusional saying he gave $500 last week. I think I got $100 from him in the 6 months he was there. He got fucked up on pills and passes out and pissed himself on my brand new couch. Then tried to fight me when I yelled at him and said he had to pay for it too. Get cleaned. I told him to get out at that point then it was a nightmare. He would send threatening messages to me saying how he was going to kill me. Cops got called. Cops took some statements, wrote down the text messages and didn't do crap at the time. Three months later they arrest him and our mom calls me saying it's all my fault and I need to drop the charges. Needless to say I'm not real close with my family these days. Oh yeah. I had a bed in the office that totally covered in piss after he stayed there. Also found a duffel bag full of porn in the room and a few dozen little baggies with coke residue in them. 
immediately ended the relationship and sent her packing. Blacklisted from the building, locks changed. Nothing was stolen. It was the violation of the space and how long she was using us. I couldn't believe I had let her be alone with my dogs for that all that time. How could I have known, though? She was this cute little Mormon girl that let on like cookies were her downfall. She knew exactly when we were coming and going and the dogs loved her. The cooker was finding Mormon literature about rules in marriage intentionally shoved deep under our bed like some magic talisman when we moved out. We're two men. 